All right, welcome back to Kiersey's virtual classroom. Today we're talking about plate tectonic boundaries. So previously we talked about continental drift and the rise of plate tectonic theory. Now we're going to talk about the boundaries specifically. Okay, so we discussed a little bit last time that we have major plates, tectonic plates on Earth, and these are some of their interactions and where they're located. And we're going to get further into depth from there. Okay, so remember the seven major lithospheric plates are North America, South America, Eurasia, Africa, India, Pacific, and Antarctica. And remember, the Pacific is the largest of them. Okay, so what are tectonic plates made of? Remember, we talked about the composition of the interior of the Earth, and the plates are made up of that lithosphere, which was the crust and upper mantle. Remember, this is all solid. So the upper mantle is solid and the crust is solid. So the lithosphere is those two components and that is what makes up a tectonic plate. Sometimes you'll hear them referred to as, as lithospheric plates, um, but that's just referring to the tectonic plates. It's just a more specific um, name. Okay, and the tectonic plates slide on the asthenosphere. Remember, the asthenosphere is directly below the lithosphere, and it's what allows the tectonic plates to actually move. And it is a little bit more molten like a Laffy Taffy, so as it heats up, it becomes more mobile. And it is not solid rock, so the tectonic plates do not move along solid rock, they move along molten rock, which is the asthenosphere. Okay, so talking about the plate boundaries, we have three basic types. So this is the way that tectonic plates can interact with each other. We have divergent, convergent, and transform. So divergent plate boundaries are called constructive margins. So the reason they're called constructive margins is because they are creating crust. They are creating new rock where the two plates are pulling apart. Okay, This is under tensional stress. So stress is what rocks will undergo and it will pull them apart. So this is those convective cells coming up and pulling the rocks apart. Remember at the seafloor spreading ridges. Convergent plate boundaries come together and they form destructive margins. And the reason we call these destructive margins because they're usually destroying rocks in some fashion. When you slam two rocks together, they're either gonna go upwards or one is gonna sink below the other. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But you're not creating anything here, you're destroying rocks in general, or returning them to the mantle to recycle them. So this forms under compressional stress. So remember three types of stress, tension is pulling apart, compression is pushing together, and shear is sliding past each other. Okay. And then transform plate boundaries is when they slide past each other. So they're just kind of bumping into each other as they go by. And we call these conservative margins because they're not creating or destroying anything. They are just conserving what is there and all you really see is offset on the surface. Okay, and this forms from shear stress. So that's the third type of stress. With divergent plate boundaries, this is where we see the two mantle convection cells actually pulling the lithosphere apart as it rotates and goes through its convective cycle and it pulls apart two tectonic plates. Most of these are located around oceanic ridges in the middle of the um, Atlantic or in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, so this would be oceanic ridges and seafloor spreading. That's where um, these would be located. Again, the plates will pull apart from each other. And these are usually oceanic plates. Sometimes they do propagate onto land, like in Iceland, but it will always be part of an oceanic plate, not a continental plate. Okay. This is caused by tensional stress, as I mentioned before. And here is where we are creating new crust. Okay. New crust is being created where the plates are actually spreading. Mantle material actually fills that in forms the ridge that you see in the middle of the ocean, and that is the new crust that is formed. So what do you see happening here? Um, look at this diagram and kind of take a minute to see if you can decide what you think is happening, if you could explain it. Um, what type of stress would this be? 
Um, so take a minute, pause the video if you need to, and then we will discuss. Okay, so now that you've hopefully paused the video or taken a minute to think about it, um, this is the development of a mid-ocean ridge. So mid-ocean ridges don't always occur right in the middle of an ocean when they first start. Sometimes this happens below a continental crust. It spreads and thins the continental crust and then forms its own oceanic crust that then begins to spread apart. So here in time A, we see a continental crust. We see some volcanism or volcanoes um, erupting. Magma or mantle material is coming up. So this would be like a convective cell constantly putting pressure on this continental crust here. And then eventually that crust begins to thin and we see the development of a rift valley, which is where material, continental crust material is thinning and you see a lot of volcanic activity. And then eventually that rift valley gets so low in elevation and so thin that a sea might fill in. And then you start to see the development of oceanic crust. And once you get into time D, we see the actual development of the mid-ocean ridge, a rift valley within that mid-ocean ridge, and oceanic crust now here that then meets with the continental crust and has separated this continent essentially. Okay, so this is actually happening in real time right now, which is kind of cool in Africa. So if you've ever heard of the East African Rift, that's what's happening here, is a divergent boundary is forming. So we see um, mantle convective cells coming up and splitting apart um, East Africa and is forming this rift. So right now the East African Rift is in time B here. And part of the rift has already filled in with C, which would be the Red Sea. So this entire area here will eventually split apart from Africa and become its own little mini continent. Okay, so that boundary extends from uh, the northern Red Sea all the way through the Gulf here and then down um, eastern Africa. And so eventually the Arabian Peninsula will be even farther away from Africa and all of this East African property, um, coastal property will become basically islands off of the east coast of Africa um, once this rift valley finally opens up to the Red Sea and it'll be its own little peninsula and or island continent. Iceland is also being pulled apart. It is a rift um, and high volcanic area. So you go to Iceland and a lot of the area is um, under volcanic activity. So Iceland actually lies right in the middle of the mid-Atlantic um, Ridge. So it is one of the mid-ocean ridges. It's the mid-Atlantic Ridge in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where the North American Plate and the Eurasian Plate are pulling apart from each other and they're basically splitting Iceland in half. Eventually um, the land will become so thin that the Atlantic Ocean will fill that in and you'll basically have two pieces of Iceland. This takes millions of years for the record, um, but eventually it will become two separate continents. All right, moving on to convergent plate boundaries. This is kind of the beast of plate boundaries because there are a lot of different things that can happen depending on whether oceanic crust or continental crust is interfering with each other or with the same type of crust. So we have three, within this one plate boundary, we have three different types of plate boundaries that can occur. So here plates are colliding. They're caused by compression. So two plates are colliding with each other and they're under compression stress. And there are three interactions that I talked about. So continental, continental. So this is when two continental plates collide. So this is the bottom one here. We'll talk about what each of them will um, exhibit. Oceanic, oceanic, so that's two oceanic plates, which is the top one here, colliding. Continental oceanic, which would be continental plate and oceanic plate colliding with each other and creating something or destroying. So, first one we'll talk about is continental, continental collision. So, this is when two continental crusts are colliding. What ends up happening here is most of the material, because they're similar densities, goes up. And so huge, huge mountain ranges are created. And 
Some of the material will slide underneath another, depending on the densities. So if one is just slightly denser than the other, you will see some continental crust go below or dive below another continental crust. But it is a very shallow angle. This is just slightly difference in density that causes it to actually go down. Remember, anything that's higher density wants to go closer to the center of the Earth. So that material will dive down and the other material stays more buoyant, buoyant on top. But for the most part, most of the rocks here are going upwards. Okay, so this would be an example like the Himalayas. So in the Himalayas, the India plate collided with the Eurasia plate around 10 million years ago or so is when the collision actually occurred. It started its collision course around 71 million years ago. And those are two continental plates that collided pretty drastically and formed these very huge mountain ranges. In fact, the highest mountain range on Earth, which would be the Himalayas, where Mount Everest is. All right, moving on to oceanic oceanic collision. This is when two oceanic plates collide, and one will run over the other and sink slightly, just like with continental continental, but their densities are very close to the same. So they're not going to have a very steep angle of um, sliding down into the mantle. So a lot of what happens here is a lot of bending, um, and I'll show you a diagram in a second. And it forms these very, very deep trenches. So what's really cool about oceanic oceanic collision is it forms the deepest trenches in the world, one of them being the Mariana Trench, which is 11 kilometers deep. Very, very deep. So let's show you a diagram here. So here we have a oceanic plate colliding with another oceanic plate. And right here is where the trench will lie. So this is right where one of the plates is subducting beneath the other. And so you see kind of this bending effect. And because they're below the ocean, they're already very, very deep. And so the bending effect creates these very deep trenches. And material is also being scraped off as it slides under. So you can imagine if you put like a bunch of pieces of paper, like copy paper, on a conveyor belt at the grocery store. When the conveyor belt goes to go back down underneath, all those papers get kind of stuck in there. So those would be like the rocks along this oceanic crest that are getting stuck in there. And that forms what we call the accretionary wedge. It's everything that gets stuck in the conveyor belt as the oceanic plate is subducting. We'll also see that in oceanic continental collision. Another interesting thing that happens here is that because we're underwater, the water on top of the oceanic plate is also being, some of it is being taken down into the mantle. When uh, water is introduced into the mantle, it lowers the melting temperature of the magma. And because you're lowering the melting temperature, it becomes lighter and it will rise. And when it rises, it creates a volcano. And this will create what we call volcanic island arc. And you'll see this just on the um, leeward side of the interaction between the two plates. You'll also see um, after the development of an oceanic island arc, you'll see a fore arc basin and a back arc basin, the back arc being the opposite side of where the plates are interacting, the fore arc being the side where they are actually interacting. And then, of course, with like any interaction here, you're going to see earthquakes. So an example of this would be the Aleutian Islands. If you just pull up Google Earth, you'll see this image here if you go to the Aleutian Islands, and you can clearly see where the trench is. It's much, much darker here below the ocean. And these islands are the volcanic island arc that are formed. So this is where the Pacific Plate is subducting beneath the North American Plate in Alaska. All right, then we get into the mother of all convergent plate boundaries, which is the continental oceanic collision. We also call this subduction. So if you hear me say subduction zone, this is what we're referring to is continental oceanic collision. So here, the continental crust is much more buoyant than the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust is dense. And so what happens is when it interacts with the continental crust, it sinks very steeply into the mantle. It has a lot of the same features as oceanic oceanic collision, where we do see an accretionary wedge, which is what these little green kind of folds are. 
We also see a trench. They're not nearly as deep as with oceanic oceanic, but the steepness at which the oceanic crust dives back down into the mantle is a lot steeper angle than the other two um, collisions. So in addition, it also brings water down into the mantle again, which dehydrates and allows for more melting of the mantle material, allows it to rise, and here we end up with continental volcanoes, okay? So, so we get continental volcanoes that are along the continental crust. Okay, another thing that happens with continental oceanic plate boundaries is we get really extreme earthquakes. So because the steepness of the oceanic plate diving into the mantle, you can see earthquakes at a much deeper depth in the earth. So the deeper the earthquake originates, the stronger it's going to be on the surface. So the stronger the shaking will be. We have shallow earthquakes, they're not going to be very strong. But if they originate really deep, they will be very strong on the surface. So there's something called the Benioff zone, which is the zone of earthquakes along the top of the subducting slab, which will be the oceanic plate. So the zone of earthquakes along the top of the oceanic lithospheric plate is called the Benioff zone. And so the zone is important because it not only tells us where we might see a lithospheric plate um, subducting, but it also tells us how strong earthquakes might be in this area. So if we recognize that there is a continental plate, or sorry, uh, an oceanic plate subducting beneath a continental plate in an area, we know that they're going to experience strong earthquakes. We can map out those earthquakes and kind of see what areas are most prone. All right, so um, subduction occurs in a lot of different places around the Earth. One of the most um, prominent to us would be the Cascades. So all of the Cascadian volcanoes that run from Northern California into Oregon, Washington, and Canada are part of the Cascades. And that's where we have, we see a lot of volcanoes like Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Lassen. So Mount Lassen is one of um, the California volcanoes in Northern California. Um, it last erupted in 1915, so it's been quite a while since it has erupted, but is not considered dormant yet because it does show volcanic activity. Um, but this is a result of the continental oceanic collision off the coast of California. And then we have the Cascades um, of California, also Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta is really easy to see from I-5 if you ever go north, um, and it is it is a beautiful isolated volcano um, kind of in the center of uh, Sacramento Valley um, going into the Cascades. All right, so to sum up, I know that was a lot for convergent plate boundaries, so to sum that up a little bit, we have continental oceanic convergence, which creates our continental volcanoes. Our oceanic oceanic convergence creates our volcanic island arcs and our really deep trenches. And then continental continental convergence creates the tallest mountains that we see on Earth. All right, and then transform plate boundaries. So this hits close to home because that's our main convergent or our main um, plate boundary in California. So I want you to take a minute to look at this map and see if you can tell what is happening. There are some arrows there to kind of indicate, but take a second and uh, pause the video if you need to figure that out. We're not going to discuss necessarily in groups if you want to work on this with a partner you are more than welcome to um, but you should be observing a couple of different things so reading labels observing arrows things like that so we do see um, some cities that you're probably familiar with los angeles san francisco labeled so you kind of give a relative idea of where we are um, so we have the north american plate here the Pacific Plate on the um, west side here. And we have this line that kind of runs all the way up um, to Northern California and then kind of makes a left um, in the Northern California region just above San Francisco, just north of San Francisco. Um, so, and then we move into something that's labeled a subduction zone. 
So what's interesting about California is that we used to be part of this very vast subduction zone that ran um, this entire length of California and then into Baja. And it has since turned into or transformed into a transform plate boundary because all of the oceanic plate that was being subducted has now disappeared um, beneath North America. So it used to be called the Farallon plate and it is now um, completely underneath North America and the only remnants we see are the Juan de Fuca plate up in here. And um, it's renamed because it's a fragment of the overall Farallon plate. And now we see a transform plate boundary where the Pacific plate and the North American plate are just sliding past each other. Okay, so when they slide past each other, there's not um, a whole lot of creation or destruction of rocks, but there is some offset that will occur. So you will say offset of different surface features, and um, you know that could be rocks, that can be streams, that can be human-built things, so fences, buildings, all sorts of things um, can be offset by a transform um, plate boundary. So we see the sliding past each other. Here, North American plate moves in a southeast direction and the Pacific plate moves in a northwest direction. In the middle, you will see some crumbling of rocks. So it's like if you took a, an Oreo cookie or really any cookie and you broke it in half and then slid it past each other really fast, there's crumbling in the middle, right? So that's what happens to the rocks in a transform plate boundary as well. So you'll see some crumbling, so some low um, elevation mountain ranges. This isn't unique to us though. There are other transform plate boundaries. Um, so in Turkey, there is a uh, fault called the North Anatolian Fault, where the Anatolian block of the Eurasian plate is moving in a different direction or apart from the Eurasian plate. And so you see this kind of sliding past in an east-west direction instead of a northwest-southeast direction like we see in California. The Alpine Fault in New Zealand is responsible for basically breaking New Zealand apart. So we have the Pacific Plate and the Australian Plate interacting here. And because of their relative motion, the Alpine Fault, or sorry, the Australian Plate is moving in a northeast direction and the Pacific Plate moves in a southwest direction here. And you see the, the islands basically, or the island being torn kind of apart in that fashion. And so how do we know where the plate boundaries are and um, where they all interact? Well, that's from the seismic network. So since we've been able to actually record um, seismology on Earth, so that would be earthquakes occurring on Earth, we have pinpointed all of those locations and mapped them out. So this is a map of where a lot of the earthquakes occur on Earth. And as you can kind of see, it looks a lot like that other diagram I showed you before. It looks like this one. It kind of outlines the Earth's plates for us. So it shows us where we see tectonic plates. And that's how we know the location of all the different tectonic plates or the approximate location. Obviously, they're not exact, but we know approximately where all of these plates would lie based on the seismic network. All right, so one other thing we need to talk about is the ring of fire. So I talked about all the plate boundaries interacting and how a lot of them cause volcanism or volcanic eruptions. Well, since a lot of the volcanism is associated with plate boundaries, if you look at a map of where volcanoes lie, there are a couple that are kind of outliers. They lie in the center of plates. So the Pacific Ring of Fire is the ring of volcanoes that extend from South America all the way up North America, through the Aleutian Islands, down um, the Philippine Plate near um, Japan, and then uh, down through the Pacific, uh, the Western Pacific. And so this is the Pacific Ring of Fire, but there are a few that kind of stick out in the middle of the Pacific Plate. So what do you think these, these are here? If anybody has a guess, you can kind of shout it out if you want to. If not, we'll continue. So those are caused from hot spots. So subduction, rifting, those cause volcanoes, and these guys here would be caused from something called a hot spot. So they're not being derived from tectonic um, movement. So tectonic movement would be subduction. So remember, subducting plates cause volcanic activity or rifting, pulling apart, magma fills in, 
that causes volcanic activity. Hot spots are kind of their own thing. They happen in the middle, can happen in the center of plates where you don't have two plates interacting. So these guys here are hotspot volcanoes. If you know what kind, what actual hotspot volcanoes they are, great. This will be easy for you. But if not, um, we'll talk about it. So those are the Hawaiian Islands. So the Hawaiian Islands are really unique because not only are they beautiful, obviously, um, they're a hot spot and they help preserve the motion of the Pacific Plate. So let me explain how that kind of works. So hot spots are stationary. They do not move. Um, they are just mantle plumes that have um, risen into the crust and then are pushing their way towards a area of lower pressure, which would be basically out of the crust. And by doing this, they put pressure on the crust. They eventually crack the crust, find those crevices, and then escape as lava. And so they are stationary um, beings, if you will. So hot spots are stationary. The plates are what are moving. So as a hot spot actually starts coming up, it will develop a little volcano. And then eventually the plate will move. And when the plate moves, it takes that volcano it put on the surface with it. But the hot spot stays stationary. And so as it moves, as the plate moves away from the hot spot or where the hot spot was originally, it takes those things with it. And so you end up seeing a chain of islands. So we talked a little bit about the caused by rising magma plumes and it develops volcanoes or actual permanent features or rocks on the surface. Okay, so here in the Hawaiian Islands, we have the main islands, which are um, zoomed in here. And then this is the entire Emperor Seamount, which includes the Hawaiian Islands. And these islands, not all of them are visible above the ocean floor. And that's because over time they erode and they have moved away from the hotspot. So remember the hotspot stays stationary. The plate is here, it forms a volcano, and then the plate moves. And it takes that with it, but this the hot spot's still stationary, and then it makes another one. It makes another one. And so it's dragging these islands in whatever direction the plate is moving. And so in this case, we do see a bend in the islands, which is pretty unique. So the bend will show you that at some point around 42, 43 million years ago, there was a shift in the direction. So around 42, 43 million years ago, the, sh the direction of the plate motion of the Pacific plate was in a northern direction. And now we see a more northwestern direction, right? So that's what is creating this bend in the islands is a change in direction of the Pacific plate motion. Okay, and that can happen for a number of reasons. A lot of the time, what, what is the driving factor? Is it running into other plates that is pushing it in a different direction? Okay, so to review just a little bit, we have three basic plate boundaries, divergent, convergent, and transform. With divergent, the plates are moving apart and new crust is created. They are, um, magma is coming to the surface, which is creating that new crust. Convergent plate boundaries, the plates are coming together, and that's the oceanic, oceanic, continental, continental, or continental oceanic. Crust is returning to the mantle in a lot of these interactions. And then with transform, plates are just sliding past each other. Nothing is created or destroyed. All you see is offset on the surface. All right, so that's it for plate tectonics, and I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Bye.